In this video, I want to talk through an example of the linear probability model. So the example I'm going to talk through here is our dependent variable here is whether or not an individual goes to college. And this dependent variable is a binary dependent variable because the, val the variable takes on a value of 1 if an individual does attend college and a 0 otherwise. And the model which we're going to be talking about here is going to have college as its dependent variable and that's going to be equal to alpha plus beta 1 times their parental wage. So that's the, uh, let's say, weekly wage rate of their parents plus beta 2 times CS, where CS represents whether or not an individual has completed school for that particular individual. So this CS is a dummy variable, whereas parental wage is a continuous variable. And then finally, we have our error term, epsilon, which is taken to be mean zero and IID. So we know from the last video that the expected value of our dependent variable college, given that we already have their parental wage rate, and given also that we know whether or not they actually completed school, should be equal to the probability that that individual attends college, given that we have their parental wage rate and given whether or not we know that they completed school. But it's easy enough to calculate the expectation of college from this above model, right? We know that the expected value of college, given their parental wage and also given that we have whether or not they've completed school, should just be equal to alpha plus beta 1 times parental wage plus beta 2 times whether they completed school or not. Because this last term, epsilon here, has a mean of zero, so it disappears when we take an expectation. And furthermore, we know from this above relationship that this bottom here really represents the probability of whether an individual attends college, given that we have their parental wage rate and given that we know whether or not they completed school. So what do the coefficients beta 1 and beta 2 actually mean in this relationship? Well, it's not hard to see. If we were to increment parental wage by, let's say, one unit, so it became parental wage plus 1, then because we're multiplying by this beta 1 here, the effect is going to be to add a beta 1 onto this term here. So beta 1 here is the increment in probability, or the probability that ind individual attends school, associated with a one unit change in parental wage. Okay, so what does beta 2 mean here? So remember that CS is a dummy variable, so it takes on a value of 0 if they didn't complete school, and it takes on a value of 1 if they did complete. So what does beta 2 mean in this context? Well, it's quite easy to see, just like we did for parental wage. Essentially, beta 2 here, if they didn't complete school, this second term would disappear. Whereas if they did complete school, CS is equal to 1, so this CS disappears and we're just left with beta 2 times 1. So beta 2 here, all it means is it's the increment in probability that an individual attends college associated with them completing school over that would have been a, that which would have been achieved if they hadn't completed school. So just to reiterate, beta 1 and beta 2 are essentially the increment to probability that an individual attends college associated with, in the case of parental wage, a, let's say, $1 increase in parental wage, and beta 2 is the increment to probability that an individual attends college associated with them completing school uh, over those that didn't complete school.